Good morning, everyone. I am Diane, and I will be the chaplain today. I am actually going to be sitting out in the fireplace room during service, so you can join me after service if you'd like prayer. Wholeness is my nature and the truth of my life. I see myself whole, complete, and as a living expression of God. My thoughts fill my consciousness with the divine idea of wholeness. My words affirm this whole wholeness. Through my actions, I bless the life energy in my body with the right balance of exercise, rest, and nutrition. I live from my wholeness even if I experience illness. I may receive treatment, but I do not consider myself weak or disease. I move through every health challenge with faith and grace, trusting the experience has come to pass. I remember wherever I am, whatever may be happening, divine life is always seeking to express through me to restore my awareness of the wholeness which is and will always be my true spiritual state of being. Your eye is the lamp of your body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But if it is not healthy, your body is full of darkness. Luke 1134. Welcome everyone to family and friends today newcomers and people who are returning back to unity we are happy to have you here if you have any questions for reverend christine is with us today um, you can talk with her otherwise you can reach patty at her email good morning everyone we're doing a new uh, song today song called House Built on Love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, a house built on love. And in this love, let us now affirm together our five principles. Can you do that with me? Okay. There is only one presence and one power in the universe in our lives, God the good. Our essence is of God, therefore we are inherently good. 
this God essence was fully expressed in Jesus the Christ. We are co-creators with God, creating reality through thought, held in mind. Through prayer and meditation, we align our heart mind with God. Through thoughts, words, and actions, we live the truth we know. Thank you. Now let us go on to our affirmations. And this is affirming our prosperity in our lives. And forgive me if I keep touching this because my ears are too little and this falls off. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so let us affirm that my ears will, I don't want them to grow. I don't want them to grow. Affirmations for prosperity in whatever area of your life. Let's go. I have faith in God as my instant, constant, abundant supply. I have faith in God to open new ways where to human sense there is no way. I have faith in God to guide, govern, and direct me in God's service. I have faith in God to raise my human consciousness to divine intelligence for a higher understanding. I have faith in myself as a child of God, eager to do the work for God. I have faith in God. Are there any prayer requests? G. Okay. All I need to know is the name. Um, if you don't mind my saying this, uh, generally in unity, we we can use the names of people, but we don't know need, need to know the condition because we're going to see that person healthy, whole, or whatever we are seeing the God light. Okay. All right. So the next person, Julie. Okay. Jeff and Celia. Margaret and Jeffy. Okay. Anyone else? Chelsea. Okay. Cynthia and Brian. Cynthia. Okay. Sandy. Oh, congratulations. Yes, sir. Gina. Oh, happy birthday, David. Okay, anyone else? Yes. Bob and Mary. Okay. All right. Yes. Chris and John. Any more prayers? Yes. Kim and David. Peace. Let us bow our heads and pray. And I ask you to move yourself into a space of all knowing. Allow yourself to just breathe in and let go. Holding in your heart, not just your mind, but in your heart, those you request a prayer for. And we say, starting off with prayer, thank you, Father God. But we know 
that you have the power to heal. Your Holy Spirit expressed through each and every one of us. We are your children. We are one with you. As one with you, we are whole, healthy, and wise. We are prosperous. We have peace in our soul because peace begins with us and we send that peace to the world. We have gratitude for all the great things that you've done in our lives. Thank you, Father God, for the blessing of life, of joy, of happiness, of healed bodies, of stilled minds, and peaceful hearts. But we know that through the power, through the power in the presence of your love, Jesus said, trust in God with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge him and shall direct the path. This may have been written by someone else, but Jesus is the way sure. Jesus has shown us that we are healed by our faith. And in faith, we stand before you here and now. We stand before you. We sit before you. Wherever we are, in faith, we know we are here. You said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. God, we have asked and we're asking. We're seeking and we're not here. And we are confident that you will lead us into that kingdom of all good. And the kingdom of all good is health, wealth, peace, prosperity, companionship, love, joy, all that is good and perfect in your lifestyle. In this we say, Lord, we know. And again, we say thank you. For we know our prayers are there. So it is. Become very comfortable just where you are. Allow your minds to focus in this very present moment. Allow yourself to see behind your eyes if you've closed your eyes. To see the light that is shining upon you right here and right now. Feel the presence of the Holy Spirit moving in and through you in and through the body temple. Hear the voice of Jesus. Come unto me, all you that are labored and heavy buried. 
trust in the Lord. Know that I am here with you always. I will not forsake you. Hear this in this present. Allow every cell of your body to relax in the spirit and it's, as it is filled, filled with light and love. Allow yourself to feel the love of God all around you as if you're just you and the Lord. Let your light shine through every atom and cell and proton of the body neurons, whatever the body has, every atom, allow that light to shine forth. Wherever you have a pain, allow the light of love to just shine upon that pain and remove it. Wherever you have a thought that is not a thought of God, say thank you and allow the God thought to come through. Know that you are a child of God. And as such, you inherit all the good there is created for you. Breathe in and release. Breathe in the light. Release the light. Breathe. one power in that one presence, the breath of life. You breathe life. We appreciate life. Just sit quietly for a moment or two. Breathe in. This is the day that you have made. We rejoice in this day. And we are glad in it. And we go forth in hope. We go forth in faith. We go forth knowing that with you all things are possible. And so it is. Thank you, God. If you have your eyes close, you may feel free to come back to this moment. So green, come back to this moment knowing that you are still surrounded and filled with light. The light that should be giving you comfort at this time. I like to stay still and feel the spirit move because you can actually feel the spirit. But your focus let thine eye be on God and only God. Praise God. Good morning. All right, it's so happy to be here today. So happy to see all of you. Uh, smiling faces. And uh, I, I, I think you know I'm Christine Randall and I'm your speaker for today. And I'll do my best. If I say something you don't understand, raise your hand and say, what are you talking about? <laughs> I think church is a, it's an experience that we, ex we, we have together and we should enjoy together. And uh, when I speak, I tend to want to just, I'm a part of the crowd. We're all one, right? Okay, so I'm going to hear everything you say, and I might say it up here, so be careful. <laughs> When I, in mind, that is. Okay. So today we decided that the topic is in the beginning. In the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, the beasts of the fields, the birds of the air. And after he had created everything that any of us could ever need or want to live a holy life, Everything was cr created for us to live a holy life. Remember this. 
God said, and this is on the sixth day when he said this, let us create man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female. He created them. If you want to know where that scripture is, it's in Genesis 1, 26 through 27. Now, if God created us in his image, and when he said they created, you know, there's a lot of days, them, there's a lot of text in there. You may be trying to figure out what's going on here. Is it a him or it is one, whatever. The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is one, okay? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit within us. We're still one with God. But there is a master creator. So when we think about this, we think in terms of I am a co-creator with God. I co-create just like God. So I'm going to say, considering that we are co-creators with God, which is God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we are inherently able to create just as God created. Did God create anything bad? You don't think so? Not sure that I kind of it there. Not sure, right? You say, well, I see the war here. That's bad. Uh, not necessarily. You guess how you see it. It's all in how we see things. We have the ability to lift our thinking. So when we talk about being co-creators, we have our, the ability to lift our thinking to a level of thinking that is God thought. Now, when we talked about in, in, in that scripture, when it talked about the, the fish of the sea, what do you think that, that, that means? These are thoughts. And you notice they are lower thoughts. These are the thoughts. Did anybody here have thoughts running around your mind every day? Like, where did that come from? Why is she wearing those shoes? And you're thinking, why do I care? Why do I care? So you want to, those are the thoughts that are running all over, running rampant, doing that thing. You know, fish come in schools, right? There's a bunch of them. They be going, Shh. our thoughts do the same thing. But then there are other thoughts. He talked about the birds in the air, right? Those thoughts are higher thoughts. The birds above in the air. Now I'm going to lift my thoughts higher. And just as God was able to create, so can I. Today is the seventh day of January, 2024. What are you going to create in this beginning? This is a time for us to start anew. Now, the first was, when was the first? Last Monday or something? Doesn't matter. It's still the first today. What are we going to create anew? What thoughts are we going to have that's going to lift us up and lift up our world? It's not just about you. If I lift myself up, I can't help but lift you up. I got to. If I lift you up, us together, we're going to lift up the world. In the beginning. In the beginning. In his message on the 15th day of January in 2017, Ed Rabel. Any of you know Ed Rabel? Ed Rabel is a prominent Unist minister. He was very good. Spirit worked through and spoke through him, and he allowed it to happen. He said that when we said, let us, when, when the scripture says, let us make man in our own image, it is the first time that man is mentioned as a divine idea. 
we are a divine idea. And as a divine idea, we have divine ideas because we are what we are. We are one with the power and the presence of God. In our divineness, we have dominion. God gave man dominion over everything. You know what he was talking about? Your thoughts. I don't have dominion over you. You know, your person or you. I don't want it. Trust me. But what I do have dominion over is my thoughts. We will generate my actions. And not only my actions, but my reactions. Reactions are critical. What am I going to create? What am I going to do this year? Am I going to say that I am going to focus on loving more this year? Now, I'm asking you this because I want to tell you about a, a beginning that is a wonderful beginning. It's very important that we all have a beginning because you can't get to an end without a beginning, right? Or can you? Uh, I don't think so. I'm I've, I've not tried it yet, but I think if I started at at the end of the line, wherever it is, and backed up to the beginning, I'm still at the beginning no matter where I am. I, I haven't gone anywhere. I'm still at the beginning. So let us consider this. In 1892, two people by the name of Myrtle and Charles Fillmore, the co-founders of them, sat down and they did what we call, they wrote out what is called a dedication and a covenant to God. I have a few copies of these if anybody ever want any. A dedication and a covenant to God. And just to give you somewhat of an idea of what I'm talking about is what are we going to do. It says, we, Charles Fillmore and Myrtle Fillmore, husband and wife, hereby dedicated, dedicate ourselves, our time, our money, all we have and all we expect to have to the spirit of truth and through it to the Society of Unity, Silent Unity. That's the prayer, our prayer. It being understood, now this is their understanding as they do this dedication. It being understood and agreed that the said spirit of truth, God, shall render unto us an equivalent for this dedication in peace of mind, in health of body, wisdom, understanding, love, life, and an abundant supply of all things necessary to meet every want without our making any of these the object of our existence. Can you do that? Can you dedicate yourself to God and everything you got? Can you say, God, here I am. I got 25 cents in my pocket. You can have it. Or some of us may say, well, you can have half of it, right? <laughs> Dedicate yourself in your life. So when I'm talking about in the beginning, what are you going to do in this beginning, on this day? And this day is whatever day you wake up and breathe. On this day, what are you going to dedicate to God? What is your covenant with God today? If you expect to get up and pick up your bed and walk, what are you giving for? Most of the time, we're expecting God to give us something first, right? Anybody ever expect God to give you something first before you can get done what you need to be doing? I, I've walked down that line before. But did you ever stop to think? God has already given it to you. Every time you breathe, every time you awake, every time you go to sleep, God has given you everything. Do you really think it's a lack of food in the world? No, it's not. Somebody might tell you that, but it's not. 
Do you think that there's a lack of love in the world? No. But we get to that point where we think those things. So what am I willing to dedicate to God today? I am fully dedicated my entire life to God. Whatever in my life. Yeah, you know, this is stuff that some people don't know about me. When I was about 9 or 10, I was a country girl. We lived in the country on a farm. And I'd never been to a Catholic church. Had never seen a priest. Had never seen a nun except on TV. And I just loved the fact that they had married God. And they were dedicated themselves to God. Now, that, that to me, I just loved that. So I decided I wanted to become a nun. And I didn't know anything about the Catholic faith. But what I knew is that I wanted to walk so closely with God that you could not even get a sheet of paper between us. See what I'm saying? I wanted to walk in faith and know the truth and be the truth and live the truth. And you have to make some kind of decision about what you're going to dedicate, what your covenant with God is going to be. You have to make some decision on that in order for you to walk through the streets called the world, the universe, the world. In order for us to face everything we need to face on a daily basis, my hip hurting, my neighbor being nasty, whatever. Because see, when your neighbor decides that they want to be anything other than the child of God, express it at least, you want to keep expressing God. Is that not right? You want to express what's true. So if you if, so in order to do that, we have to make up our mind. We have to decide. Do you know now every time I do something I shouldn't do, I say, forgive me, God, real, real quick. Like, forgive me, God. I remember just like that. I'm not telling you I'm perfect back in the mean. I'm on earth. I'm still walking down here playing around. But I know how to love. And I know how to respect. And I know how to love my God first and foremost. Because when I love God, I love all of you. There's no expectation. I don't need anything from you. I don't want anything from you. I love you. Now, you may come back and give me the same love, the same kind of love. I appreciate that. But today, decide. I am a part of God. I am a co-creator with God. What am I going to do in 2014, 2024, 2014, 2024 that I did not do in 2023? How am I going to lift up God in this world better than I did or stronger than I did in 2023? Do you think you can do something different in your life that will show the world that God is in all ways, ways shall be, that you're walking in the light, that you are practicing in the light, that you are the light. Scriptures say, don't shine your, hide your, 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 your light under a bushel barrel. You let your light shine. Is there anything within you that you know that you need to change? that you need to focus on. I have a friend that said, well, you know, I got to, I got to, I got to work on this temporal fine. Well, make a covenant. Now I'm not, I'm going to be mild mannered or whatever, but I'm not going to get angry. And if I get angry, I know how to apologize. I know how to step back. Most things in life only take, it takes us to take a deep breath. Breathe in. Let go. Meditation is the reason. Breathe in. Let go. Some people in the in the corporate world, I learned one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Not necessarily that fast. Count to ten before you respond. If something is bothering you, so do we dedicate ourselves to God this year in a different way? 
Do I decide that I want to be more loving this this year? Do I decide that I want to be more caring this year? Do I decide that I want to give more this year? And how do I want to give? What is it? Because not all of us can be the feel mores and dedicate everything that we are, the whole of us. We have to work up to that point. And that's okay. There is no judgment in that. One day at a time. One step at a time. There are... Uh, I don't know how true this is, but I kind of got this note that there was a uh, an atheist. And this atheist person decided, it was a scientist, by the way, an atheist scientist. And this atheist scientist decided that he wanted to tell God, he said, uh, you know what? We figured out how to make a man without you talking to God now without you God and God said see this now God said okay let me see you do it okay he didn't tell him he couldn't do it did he he said let me see you do it so the guy goes on the atheist guy he decides to bend down scoop up a big hand of earth God said oh oh hold on stop 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 right there he said, you need to go get your own dirt. <laughs> See, everything belongs to God. So when you start telling me about, you know, telling God, oh, I don't need you for something, that's not true. Because everything is already God. So what, what are you talking about? So God just stopped him. He wasn't mean or evil. He just said, no, you go get your own dirt. If you can make a man, go get your own dirt. Because this is my dirt. I like to laugh a little bit. And um, some of these things will make so much sense when you talk about how we want to live our lives as Christians, as people of God, and how we want to live the divine, that we need to look at some of these outer things and what people say and the things they do and say. Because even though they may be funny, but you do get the gist of, of what's going on in there. So again, I ask you today, as I get ready to close, how and what are you going to dedicate to God? How are you going to use the fish of the of the air, I mean the birds of the air to fly? How are you going to squash the fish in the ocean that are just running rampant? What are you going to do and how are you going to do it? And do you think you need to do it? And if you don't think you need to do it, don't do it. Maybe some of us have already arrived. We have we don't need to do anything else. But I say love you one enough. I leave you with the words of a person that I really don't know named Louis Heron. And Louis says, everything begins at the beginning. And quite often, the beginning begins when you shift your mind in a new direction. I thought that was pretty cool. Thank you all very much. God bless you and keep you. And uh, I enjoy being with you today. Thank you. You know those uh, the blessings that Reverend Patty gave you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, there's a little bank that goes with those to help you build your prosperity consciousness. We'll be discussing this more in the class that we're going to have in uh, starting in February. We're going to discuss this more. Uh, but that uh, that is an offering blessing that you can use through all of the blessings. So now we're going to do our blessings of tithes and offerings. Um, and we're going to state that there is no lack of limitation. Freely I give and freely I receive from God's abundance. I am blessed as I give, and unity is blessed in receiving. Praise God. Praise God. There is no limit.
then police ka event have to take up shirt fine if i miss something god forgive me and y'all too <laughs> maybe <laughs> to rest and can I be defied so the wise men free from individuality goes to rest and can I be defied as a flower Holy Spirit, thank you for these givers. I ask you to bless all of these givers with health, wealth, wealth, wholeness, and well-being in every way. May they have peace of mind and fill your heart in their hearts. May they feel the abundance of your joy and the abundance of your love. Freely you have given, freely they have given, and we say thank you, God, for your many blessings. Are there any announcements? Okay. Membership class. If you are not yet a member and would like to join our community, please let Reverend Patty know as soon as possible. You can let her know today. Do an email. Somebody give you a phone, whatever. Just let her know. 
Uh, you can call the office at 414-475-0105 and you see the email there. And beginning January 28th after service, what are we going to do? That's the start. It begins January 28th after service. This is a, okay, in the White Stone service next Sunday. You want to be here for this. January 14th, this is an ancient ritual that when we start the new year, we are invited to wipe the slate clean and name ourselves anew. So by next Sunday, you will have decided what you want to do more today with God. How you're going to dedicate to God, right? By that time. And by the time you get to next Sunday, you're ready for a new name. And no, that's serious. You're ready for it. You have wiped the slate. We've let the slate go. This is a new, this is a new beginning. So, and usually we pray and meditate before we decide on our name. We don't just pick a name. It's somewhere in meditation and maybe a name you would never think of. And write it on your white stone. The Prosperity 10 Commandment class presented by my name is Christine Randall begins on February 6, 6.30 Central Time via Zoom. A book is available at unity.org. Sign up sheets on the table in the lobby. Requested love offering $15 per class. No one turned away. Meaning if you do not have $15, do not stay away from the class. Sign up for the class and confidentially let Reverend Patty know that you don't have $15 because it's not my business. It's not anybody else's business. But in this class, it's a prosperity class to help us raise our awareness of prosperity and how we allow prosperity to flow in our lives. Okay? And I guarantee you it's going to be a good class because all of you guys are going to be helping me pitch in it, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And we are looking for volunteers to help take down and pack up Christmas decorations. That's always a job, and it's always a lot of fun. So ask them to make some soup on that day so you all can have soup. Okay. That would be for Tuesday, January 9th at, at, 9, at 10 a.m. The more, the merrier. Okay. Happy birthday and anniversary to all our January celebrants. Anybody have a birthday this month? Happy birthday. Whoa, what's your name? Susan. Happy birthday, Susan. Oh, fantastic. Dorothy. Happy birthday, Dorothy. Who else? Linda. Oh, my God. Oh, all this great stuff. All these new beginnings. You. Oh, David, you put him on the list for prayer. Thank you. Yes. Happy birthday to everyone. All these new beginnings. Today is the first day of the rest of our lives, right? Thank you. Okay, is that all of the announcements? Okay. Now we can sing the closing peace song. How about that? Is that good for you? <laughs> Yeah.
the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Thank you, God. Praise be to God. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a good week.